welcome everybody another edition around the bones around the cage we got val what's going on val uh not much i'm just getting over the flu i've i've had that uh awful thing all week and i didn't know if i was going to even make the show tonight because ah it was pretty bad so hey I'm crazy cool. witch hey Catherine. and that's eight tammy johnson crazy witch oh help me i'm sorry you're not feeling good everything else going okay everything is fine everything is fine uh i i know that we have uh this gentleman coming on that's you know i've been anxious to uh chit chat with i i know yeah. i've seen him, seen him around but uh, seen him around he has been around yeah i've i've not had the opportunity to mr hensley everybody yeah. welcome to the show yeah we got the old bear backstage yeah what do you think about that now i think that's very good i think it's very good yeah thank you tammy <laughs> yeah i'll feel better you do you do you do you do you do not sound like val today no that, no you don't <laughs> no but no, I'm, I'm you getting don't. better i'm getting well, i hope better, you though. do feel better but yeah let's go ahead and bring uh old uh, bear back on no bear welcome to the show glad to have you thanks for having me guys oh absolutely glad to have you on the show anytime anytime yeah welcome welcome so uh introduce yourself for people that don't know about you and give us a little history on you. well um everybody knows me as old bear uh, it's been my cb handle it's been uh i was given that uh moniker by my first wife uh due to a movie uh with sissy spacek in it uh coal miner's daughter and uh I've been chasing these creatures around for 30 plus years, uh, doing investigations, trying to, uh, catch up to them and find out what they are. And, and I've helped, uh, quite a few people about, you know, I think 15 people that have had trouble with Bigfoot over the years. Uh, it's ranged from where you just go in and, you know, set boundaries and they listen and then you deal with ones that don't know how to listen. Mm. Uh, and you do what you have to do to get them to understand that we're at the top of the food chain and you're, you're messing with the wrong predator. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting, uh, old bear. My moniker is gumshoe guy. Mm -hmm. and that's and, and and i know when i've i've seen you around but i never connected the name with the face and stuff but i'm so glad to finally meet you mm -hmm. um everything that i've heard about you was was pretty pretty good i mean i was impressed by a lot of the things that i've heard a lot of the people that know of you came to me and said hey you gotta you gotta talk to this guy old bear and I think I re reached out to you once or something. Yeah, we spoke on the phone a couple of once yeah. or twice. Yeah, and and something was going on or something. I don't know. It's it's life. It's what we it's what we got going on. So uh, I heard part of your conversation with Grizz about uh, Sasquatches. You see, yeah. what I do, and I've only been involved in this for about twelve years. Yeah. But, but what I did was I brought, I brought, um, I brought my skills and, and experience and stuff from law enforcement into mm -hmm. into the fray here with the big footery and stuff. And what I look at is is patterns and confluences, trying to figure out you know what the behavior is, what the motive is, what the manner is. And yeah, I see, I see a number of people that, that, um, that, that have a, um, a feeling that, that, um, Bigfoots are, are people and that, and that they can be, um, made to 
love them, respect them, you know, even let them in their houses and stuff. What do you think about that, old bear? Well, the people have to understand this. Yes, they are a type of people in the sense of the word that they they have their own society, they have their own structure, mm-hmm. and they have their own hierarchy. Uh, the big males, they're the boss. Nobody steps over them. And if there's a fight between two clans, it's the two big males that get in the fight and they settle it. You know, it could be a life, life or death struggle. And that's mm-hmm. the way they see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, letting these creatures come to your home and stay around your home, uh, they know that we are physically unable to match them. They know that. They're not dumb. Uh, they have, uh, they can, they can sense things that we can't, they can smell pheromones, you know, whatever comes out of your body, they can smell it. Uh, they can sense your fear through smell because we put off pheromones that show fear. All animals do it. Everything on this planet does it. Mm -hmm. And when they sense that they've got you. When you're letting them come to your home, and if they can intimidate you in the least bit into feeding them, supplying them with a, 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 a place to live, like in a barn, uh, and providing food for them, they're getting everything they want. But the first time you do it and don't do it on a regular basis, you're asking for a world of hurt in my book. Mm-hmm. I have seen people, I've had to help four or five different families because they were feeding Bigfoot. And somebody got sick. They didn't have the money to provide f- food for them because they got healthy appetites. I mean, they, they can eat when they want to eat and they eat a lot. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have the money and the means to do it, and you don't have the physical ability to do it, uh, you get sick, go to the hospital for three weeks, two weeks, or a week, come home and can't get outside for another week or two, or six weeks because you got a broken uh, a broken leg or something, you can't get up and, and carry that 50-pound sack of food out there to them every two to three days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're going to turn you into the... Into, uh, Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, one of the three. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a case where uh, Grizz and I were talking to a gentleman from Michigan who, uh, under the same circumstances, uh, got into a practice of, of gifting or baiting, gifting uh, peanut butter uh, to these things. And I mean, he... He, you know, he went through a lot of peanut butter. Am I correct, Chris? The, the uh, guy. Now we'll we'll put this into perspective. He was buying at Sam's <laughs> six <laughs> jumbo peanut butter jars per week, every week, and going out there. And he was wearing the same clothes, the same backpack, and he would clap each time he went out in the woods. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't have two different stations and leave these peanut butter jars. And he would do this each week. And he got sick. And guess what happened? All hell broke loose. And the fish and wildlife had to get involved. And somebody had to put their house up for sale. Pronto. Quick, fast, and a heartbeat. They were out of there. To the point where the DNR came came and left him a business card, call mm-hmm. us. And when he calls them, they say, you know, uh, we've got a great big garbage bag here full of plastic containers. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the bears are coming out now. And and the way the way it was explained to him, 
she avoided the word Sasquatch. Yeah. You know, we'll call it bears. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was he was to believe that the bears uh, were hungry and and started picking up, collecting these empty uh, peanut butter containers and throwing them on the neighbor's property and pounding on the house early in the morning, setting off the motion detectors and stuff. That's that's is ridiculous as it sounds, but that's, you know, that's her way. That's their way. The establishment's way of, of acknowledging a problem without, without going directly, you know, and saying what it is and stuff. But one or two of these databases that I work with, and you're absolutely correct. Everything that you said, it's like it's like clockwork. This is exactly what happens. You feed them, and you better you better keep on feeding them. Because if you don't, you're you're uh, what you're doing is is uh, you're doing a disservice to everyone around you. And this is something I've said before. You might think it's okay, but you didn't ask your neighbors. But you bring that hell on them, it's not fair to them. It's not fair to anybody else because they're the ones that have to put up with that too. Mm -hmm. It's not just you. But the real problem, the way I see this old bear, is, is that when that individual finally gets to the point where he's intimidated and, and is forced to leave, they put the place up for sale, very cheap, somebody like, me or some my neighbor uh, comes along and says hey this is a good deal i'm going to buy this property what they don't know is the mess that was created before them they have no idea they have no idea what what they're in uh, in store for you know with this with this kind of stuff i don't like it i'm not a i'm not a proponent of it i think it's bad it's the same reason why we're not supposed to feed bears you know, you don't want to bring them around your property. You don't want them bringing them around your people and stuff. So it's, it's a bad, bad deal. Well, Val, think of it this way. Okay. The guy that has to sell his house has to sell his property because the government has gotten involved and they give you an ultimatum. All right. You sell the house, you sell the whole kit and caboodle for some drop in the bucket just to get rid of it. And and there's laws, civil laws, that when you sell a house, you have to disclose everything. Mm. You don't tell the person why you're selling the house. You don't tell them that you got that you were feeding Bigfoot six huge jars, you know, big jars of peanut butter two or three times a week and six times a week six times a week six, six jars six, well how many times a week six jars once a week yes, once right. a week once a yeah week. well a you lot. don't tell you don't tell the next person that bought the house six months down the road these bigfoot have done terrorized this person mm -hmm. he's got anecdotal evidence of these Bigfoot coming around, beating on the house. He's got pictures of dents in the side of the aluminum siding. He's got gutters ripped off. He's got windows broken out. Mm -hmm. And he's got a camera system up. He's got this creature walking across the yard and ripping part of the siding off or ripping in the, uh, the back deck off the house. And he comes back and sues you for everything you own. Because first off, you put his life in jeopardy, his family's life in jeopardy. So he's mad. He's going to find a lawyer that's going to bring a lawsuit against you personally. Mm -hmm. Take everything you got, put you out on the street. And then after that happens, 
the government's going to come back and make him get rid of his house for a penny or two on the dollar. Because now they've Jeff, these Bigfoot have jeopardized someone's human life. And the government is going to make him sell the property either to the government or to some entity that professes to be private but is actually owned by the federal government. Now, he's out of a house. You're out of everything you own because you were afraid to disclose that these Bigfoot were coming around and you were dumb enough to start feeding them. Mm -hmm. Where does anybody win in that? There's not a human being that wants to live on the street. There's not a person that, that is buying a house thinking they're getting a great deal that wants to go in and put up with something that's seven, eight, nine, ten 10 feet tall, 12 foot tall, five foot across the chest, covered in hair, and can rip you apart in a matter of seconds. Nobody wants to deal with that. Most of these people that buy these houses out of away from a city where these creatures tend to live most of the time because they do go into the urban areas of cities definitely mm -hmm. and you know because it's easy pickings that's mm -hmm. the reason they go near the cities mm -hmm. easy food source mm -hmm. they can go and rip a lid off a garbage container and, and eat like kings mm -hmm. but the thing of it is people that move from the city and they go and buy this house out in the country they don't know nothing about these creatures because Oh, it's 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 all fairy tale and makeup. It's it's a bunch of bull. People have been doing dope, drinking, saw these things. You know, it's a figment of their imagination. Mm -hmm. Then they get the harsh reality of they are real. Now, you've jeopardized their wife. You've jeopardized their children if they have children there. And courts don't like that very much. So you're going to lose big time. Mm -hmm. And even with grainy pictures of something walking across the yard, because he didn't buy the top of the line video system that would have put him in the poorhouse in the first place, mm -hmm. court's gonna look at that and go, "Well, somebody was doing something, and you know, it, it does look like it might be, you know, some kind of an animal or a creature or something, but." You, sir, were the one that sold the house cheap and didn't tell these people. Mm -hmm. There's laws against that. You have to you have to disclose when you sell a home or a property. You are required to disclose those things. Mm -hmm. And every state has a different way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And there's lawyers out there that would love to make a killing off that. Mm -hmm. because that lawyer's in a high rise and where he lives is in a high rise. He ain't coming out in the country. <laughs> uh, so it, it's the same thing that happens every time someone feeds one of these creatures. If you're doing it unknowingly, I have pity for you. But when you know about these creatures and you've seen them and you're still handing over that ham for from Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner or, or Easter or whatever holiday you had and it, and it was a 20 pound ham and you only ate 5 pounds of it and you take that 15 pounds of ham out there and feed to these creatures and you know it you're doing nothing but putting your own life on the line mm -hmm. why do that mm -hmm. why take the chance of getting killed by one of these creatures mm -hmm. because you Pick it off. And they have the mentality. They're, they're very intelligent. That's why everybody says, well, they're the hide-and-seek champion of the world. They're smart. They're not mm -hmm. stupid. They can mm -hmm. think on their own. They can think on their feet. They know how to work out situations. And when it comes to them getting used to you feeding them, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you stop, it's like taking a toy away from a two-year-old child, and that's their favorite toy. Mm -hmm. They're going to throw a temper tantrum, 
and their temper tantrum means brute force. And it's not just one. It's not the big male you're going to deal with. You're going to deal with the big female and any other male or female in that family unit all the way down to the little ones. Mm -hmm. They're going to be mad because now they have to, they're starving. They're hungry. Mm -hmm. And the parents look at the little ones just like we do ours. We would let ourselves die before we let our child die. Mm -hmm. So it's, feeding these creatures is the worst thing you can do. You're putting your life and your family's life in trouble, in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I always thought that it's, it's my belief that Bigfoot has been around for, for many, many, many years, many years. I'm from Michigan, by the way. Mm -hmm. Hello, Brian. And um, I was just looking today through some, some old notes that I had written down about Michigan's only petroglyphs that have been found in this state. And it was in, it's in the Upper Peninsula. But in any event, they say that those petroglyphs have been there for, for at least 300 B.C. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. but, but the the drawing on the cave wall, uh, they called it Spider Man, but it looks eerily close to the 1965 hand drawn depiction of the Monroe Monster in Monroe County, Michigan. Mm -hmm. It also looks very very close to the handwritten um, depiction of the Momo Monster of Missouri around the same time period. And the point that I'm getting to is that if that is the same thing, if, if all three of those uh, pictures are of or mean the same thing, uh, Sasquatch has been around a long, long time. Longer than we have is, is probably human beings and stuff. Um, so they've survived all these years, decades, centuries, without McDonald's, without gummy bears, snicker bars, uh, ribs, you know, barbecued chicken, mm -hmm. hams and stuff, they're not going to starve. They're not going to starve. They never do. Uh, one of the, one of the things that, um, one of the things that, um, that I was sharing with uh, Grizz was the Miller document. Have you ever heard of the Miller document? Oh, oh yeah. What do you make of that document? There's one paragraph, the last paragraph in, in his document that really uh, resonates with me and, and has me sitting straight up taking notice of it is the statement that he makes in his final paragraph of that document, he says that, he says that, and I'll paraphrase it, he says that Sasquatch and man will never coexist. They can never coexist. Number one is because they're very territorial and their appetite, their appetites are voracious. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you, how do you live? I mean, um, how do you compete with, with a source that, that gobbles up thousands of calories, thousands of calories at each, at each setting? How do you compete with that? It's well, I understand, Val. It, it's, you know, when it comes to competition between man and Bigfoot, there's only one factor that man has on his side. And we have been here 
on this earth just as long as these creatures had, and in fact, a little longer than these creatures were, in my belief. Um, and when it comes to these creatures, we've always had one thing over. We can propagate an area in a short amount of time. These creatures, it takes them a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's not that many of them that mankind has always had something over all other creatures on this earth. We've always had some kind of weapons. We've always known how to fight. We always know how to get rid of problems. We deal with them in a very vicious way. Um, I mean, look at the wars that we've that we fought in, since the United States has been here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we fought against England to, to gain our independence. Mm -hmm. uh, we fought against them twice. We fought down in, in, in Mexico. We have fought mm -hmm. over in the Middle East. We have fought in the Europe. We have fought in, in Asia against Japan. And the United States has pretty much kicked butt and taken names. And mankind around the world, from the beginning of our time on this earth, has pretty much known how to do that. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to these creatures, we don't come as one. There's usually five or six of us against one of them. Mm -hmm. And we've always had an edge. We've always been a, we've always had weapons mm -hmm. that extend our range that we can reach out and touch someone and 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 kill the person or animal or whatever before it gets to us because we theoretically are easy to take down mm -hmm. against every animal there is out there you look at all the major predators lions uh bears mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean they can kill us mm -hmm. you know if it's a hand-in-hand -hand combat fight against a, a lion you're done mm-hmm Nine times out of ten, you're not going to kill it unless you got a knife or a gun with you. Mm -hmm. Man mankind has always had weapons. Mm -hmm. We have always figured out a way to best every creature there is on this earth. Mm -hmm. And as long as we have that edge, there is no species on this earth that is going to overtake mankind. Mm -hmm. And he Miller is right. He is right in the aspect of hey we can't coexist so therefore bigfoot has always taken itself and put itself out in the far reaches of the the forest you know there wasn't that many of them that you know a long time ago there wasn't very many and and now they're starting to their numbers are starting to come up people are starting to see them more and a lot of times they see them as they're walking through the woods, just, you know, a few seconds sighting, four mm -hmm. or five seconds and they're gone. Mm -hmm. And and that's a typical sighting. But whenever people start doing this stuff of, well, I'll feed them. Now you're putting yourself, you're showing that you're a provider for this creature. So they don't have to work so hard and don't have to hunt hard. And they're used to it. Mm -hmm. Once they get to the point of where they're depending on you to feed them, mm -hmm. which doesn't take very long because they get lazy just like we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at us. Most people live in cities. Mm -hmm. I don't live in a city. I live mm -hmm. out here in a holler in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And if Bigfoot wants to come to my house, they can do it. There's no fences. And if there is a fence, it ain't something that they can walk through. Mm -hmm. But there is, there used to be a Bigfoot family that was residing right across the hall from me. Mm -hmm. And they got the idea that, you know, it, we'll go where we want. They don't mm -hmm. come to my property. I don't allow it. And they know it. You come over here, you're invading my home, my domain. Mm -hmm. 
my wife is my responsibility. My children and my grandchildren are my responsibility. I don't want them here. Mm -hmm. Too much of a chance mm -hmm. of them getting upset over something stupid and harming one of my kids or one of my grandchildren or my wife. Mm -hmm. So when that big male made the mistake and walked through my yard, he found out pretty quick, I won't put up with it. We'll not tolerate it. This is my property. You might think it's yours, but I'm the one that's paying for it, mm -hmm. and I paid the taxes on it. So mm -hmm. guess what, buddy? You best not come back around. And we have an understanding. Me and an alpha male understands that I'm an alpha male, he's an alpha male, and if you come on my property, there's going to be a fight, and I'm not going to play fair. Mm -hmm. So they don't come over here. Now, they stay over on the other side. They haven't been here for two years, and here recently we started hearing them making their whoops and screams up the holler. Mm -hmm. They ain't coming down the holler. Don't come down here. It's going to start over again. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they understand that, hey, I just won't tolerate it. It's my family, my place. I don't allow that here. So, and, I see, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Val. Sorry. I, I see a lot of people that when they uh, think of Sasquatch, and window peeping, there a lot of responses to that is usually they just want to be left alone. Uh, to me, um, from my perspective, brother, if I want to be left alone, I don't go to someone's window or their door and scream and I don't try the door or I don't paw at the window. That To me, that's, that's not somebody that wants to just be left alone. Right. I'm I'm six miles away from Detroit City Limit. You don't do that around here. Mm -mm. You don't play that game around here. You don't paw at someone's door. You don't try the doors. You don't go uh, peeping in the windows around here because something bad happens most of the time when that happens. Um, but people want to equate these as, as people. If, if they're people, then if, if they're able to, then they should, they should act or emulate us, a society. Uh -huh. You want to conform, you want to emulate, you want to migrate into this, this community, this world community, then it's, you, to me and my thinking, you have to conform to our ways that's it yeah i mean i mean there's there's no two ways about it um so what is your i've seen i see a lot of reports that i classify as aggressive reports and a number of gunfire reports mm -hmm. it's lap it's lopsided it's lopsided old bear there's more, there's more aggressive reports than there are gunfire reports. What do you think the cause of that could be? Well, it's simply because they believe everything that is out there. Every piece of property, no matter whose name's on it in in the human world, it belongs to them. They have a lead, they have their thoughts, and to in their mind, they have the legal right to walk anywhere they choose. They leave the cities to us and anything outside the cities is theirs. And that's the way they, they want it. I mean, they, they want to be able to do what they want to do when they want to do it. The same as we do. I mean, you know, we, our forefathers set up a free country for a reason. It's because they were sick and tired of being told by the elites that you have to do it this way and you have to conform to what we say. We set up a free country because we wanted a free country. 
the problem is these creatures were here back in the times of the early days of human beings here on this on the, in the United States and they you know the American the Native Americans the American Indians whatever you would like to call them, mm -hmm. they were the first ones here mm -hmm. they dealt with these creatures oh yeah every tribe dealt with them every tribe mm -hmm. and most of the time they had to deal with them harshly mm -hmm. You know, with stick bows and arrows, with flint arrowheads on them, and had to deal with these creatures. These creatures are smart. They found a way to get it to where they saw one aspect of, of the Bigfoot clans that were out there found a way to deal with that. They started rolling around in mud and getting rocks and everything else in their hair and walking around with a freaking set of armor on them because that's what it, it amounted to. Mm hmm. And luckily, they didn't communicate very well with other clans because they fought amongst themselves a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, they still fight amongst themselves, but they don't do it like they used to because it's it's easy to, to walk around, let people see them. And the people that live in the cities or the small towns or, or, or that have no idea what's out here in the natural part of the United States... I mean, people's in cities that live in the big towns or the big cities, all they know the United States to be is concrete and blacktop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They get outside the city, 10, 15 miles outside the city, they say, oh, my God, there's trees everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's old road, there's there's country roads out here. They're two-lane roads, not four-lane. Oh, my God, I'm lost. They don't have a clue what's out here. There's thousands upon millions of acres <laughs> of places for Bigfoot to go and hide, live. There's millions of animals out here for them to eat. And when they come out of the city and they buy a piece of property out here, they're lost. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that you have to set your dom dominance with these creatures. Mm-hmm. And then they want to feed them. And then they, they, you know, they get pushed around. <clears throat> These creatures are not stupid. And I don't know how many times I've said this over the years. I don't know how many people I've told this. But the moment you think of Bigfoot as some big, dumb, hairy creature, you have signed your death paper. Mm -hmm. You might as well just fill out your obituary and get it over with. So I know you for quite a while, and uh, would you explain to some of the people some of your encounters that you had to go across the country and help people out with some of these, well, they want to call them rogue creatures, but uh, encounters that you had to deal with them for them? Well, they wouldn't leave the people alone? They can call them rogue all they want. Um the ones that are rogue or the ones that are nice, they don't, they don't try to find problems with, they don't try to do anything to people. They just try to coexist and they hide and, and, and every once in a while they get seen or they go around a family and, and they might peek in your window to see what you're watching on TV. See if it's interesting. Those are the rogues. An actual Bigfoot has a temperament of plain and simply. I'm the boss. You're going to do what I say, or it's going to end very badly for you. And that's the attitude that I have dealt with countless times of these creatures that have, of these Bigfoot that have come around people's homes. And it usually starts out real. It's, it's real simple. It's real easy for them to get around you. They come at night. They look in your windows. They see you're watching TV. They see that you're walking around your house. You know, you get up and go in the kitchen and get you a pop and a, and a leftover 
a cheeseburger from the refrigerator, you throw it in the microwave, you go in and you sit down and watch uh, the Twilight Zone at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning on TV. They like coming and watching that. The thing is, they see that cheeseburger as something they can eat. They know what our thing we eat is. They have been around. They've watched this for thousands upon thousands of years. We are their entertainment in the most part. They don't have TV. They don't have satellite television. They don't have cell phones. They don't even have two-way radios. So they have no way of communicating like we do. They go in and they see this whole side, of, like in a Rocky movie, the guys in there punching those sides of beef. Mm -hmm. You know, Sylvester Stallone's in there punching them for because that's the way he's training. Mm -hmm. They see all that and they're like, man, that's dinner. Mm -hmm. Then they start to equate you because now, once they've got to the point, they've got brave enough to come up and start looking at your windows at night watching your wife walk through the house in a, in a nightgown or, or in a, a robe or whatever. And they've seen your wife come out of the bathroom and out of the shower and come in and get dressed in the bedroom. They can see they're not stupid. They see a woman and she ain't got hair all over, but Hey, she's got the same parts that the female Bigfoot of God. The young ones equate that as that could be my partner. Mm -hmm. They start getting interested in the females in the family, the young males in the clan. Do. Then they start getting bolder. Then they start coming up and your trash all of a sudden is all over your backyard, but there's none of those leftover pieces of steak, no burgers, no hot dogs, no French fries, stuff that we eat. They eat it too. It don't hurt them. Now they're getting dependent upon your food source too. Mm -hmm. Now they got a new food source. They don't have to hunt as hard. They can go out and raid your garbage can and your 20 neighbors around you in the subdivision. What happens then is something in their head clicks. Hey, if I can scare these people, to give me more, I don't have to work as hard. That lazy gene in their head, the same one we got on the other side, kicks in. Now they've gone to the point of, all right, now they're trying to scare you. Now they're whistling at your wife when she comes out the front door at 7 in the morning. Or they're whistling at your 16-year-old, 15-year-old daughter uh, that all the boys are chasing in school. Um, your family pets have mis mysteriously disappeared. Or if you own a, a, a little coop of chickens out back, all of a sudden they're starting to disappear. Mm hmm couple of them at a time, three of them, four of them. You had 20, now you're down to four. Where'd they all go? They didn't fly away. Your neighbors didn't take them. Your neighbors might be 200 yards from you or, or half a mile. Just depends on where you live and how you wanted to live. Now, these creatures are getting very brave. And usually when this starts happening, is when I got phone calls. People would call me and beg me, offer to pay me whatever price I named to come out and help because I had a reputation of dealing with trouble and dealing with it in a short order and them understanding that, hey, you're not wanted here. Don't come back. If you do, it's not going to be pretty. I didn't go out and have to shoot these creatures. I didn't have to go out and, and shove a spear in them or anything like that. All you got to do is make a couple of flashbangs, 
set up some camera traps, set some lights up and some cameras that they think are working. And they get the picture. They don't like to be known. They don't like to be seen. And, and I've dealt with the ones that are, that just do not comprehend what no means. And those are the ones where you up the powder in the flashbangs, you set traps for them, uh, something that will blow up in their face, a lot of light, a lot of nasty smoke, and everything like that. And after they do those two or three times, they start getting a hint that maybe I shouldn't be here. And then people get upset because, well, you know, these creatures are getting aggressive. Well, the aggression started the minute you let them come around your house or you saw one running across your yard because, your yard because it was in there peeking at your wife or it was in there watching your kids in their bedrooms watch uh, cartoons to fall asleep to at night. Mm -hmm. It's because you didn't deal with that issue then and there. Mm -hmm. You got to be an alpha. That's what they understand. They understand alpha and they understand a beta. Mm -hmm. They're alpha and you're beta when you let them get by with something. You show them that you're an alpha, they turn the other way. They become the beta and they figure it out. They're smart. They're not stupid. They can think with the same kind of brain we got, people. Mm -hmm. And these creatures, when it comes to dealing with them, if you have to throw lead in their direction to get them to understand that you're the alpha and you're messing with the wrong person, you got to do it. I don't advocate for anyone to go out and just start shooting the Bigfoot. I said, throw lead in their direction. I don't hit them. Because when you start shooting them, you better kill them because they are going to come at you with all of their strength, all of their know-how, and they're going to have a very bad temper. They're going to mean to kill you. Mm -hmm. And not only you, but everyone in your family. Mm -hmm. And it all began with them looking in your window at night. Mm -hmm. and it just progresses from there. And as long as you allow that progression to go on, I'm sorry, people, but you're just, you're, you're sealing your fate. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've dealt with way too many people that have let it get to the point where their, their family dog or their family cat disappears. The kids are crying because they find uh, a leg or a tail or a head stuck on a limb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's their way of saying, hey, dummy, I killed your pet. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Oh, you you resonate so much with me. I'm telling you, I'm just sitting here taking it all in, soaking it in like a sponge. You must have read my stuff. I, I, you know, I, I spoke about uh, animate and inanimate objects and trees Mm -hmm. like ornaments and trophies. Uh, Bigfoot Sasquatches are like uh, commercial builders and business people. They plant their sign. They don't use business cards. They don't use yard signs. But they, what they do is, is they post their, uh, their wares up in trees for people to see and honor, you know, to, and, and be on, in awe of. And as you said, um, who's not going to look at that and, and, and take a step back and say, whoa, you know, who did this? How does, a, how does a horse get up in a tree? How does a cow get up in a tree? Um, you know, who wants to mess with that? But, uh, yeah, a lot of that resonates with me. The window peeping, it's... it's um, the window peeping is is reminds me of in law enforcement voyeurism window peeping mm -hmm. people that know profiling know that a lot of serial 
criminals start out with window peeping and it progresses along in stages, just as you explained in, in Bigfootery. It's amazing how these things run, run uh, parallel in a lot of ways. With I'm going to interrupt uh, you, Val. Yolanda, yes. Uh, people call Old Bear to deal with them. Yes, Yolanda. That's why Old Bear is on the show. I just want to mm -hmm. throw that out there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Val. I'm sorry. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that you mentioned that coincide with, with everything that I see, uh, it, you know, in my research and stuff. And, and a lot of that stuff that I see parallels human being behavior, you know, the window peeping, the, the escalation, um, that sort of stuff. What do you think about the house pounding? Is well, the house any... pounding is an intimidation thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've caught Bigfoot. What happens typically is you catch Bigfoot, one or two or three of them, they'll come to a house and start watching and they get interested in either your daughters or your wife. And I've, and I've had accounts on my channel on YouTube about this. One of the first ones I put out was about something that happened in Georgia because these, this big male and, 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 and the, uh, the beta male, the biggest beta male, his son, one of his offspring was out there pleasuring themselves because they were looking at his wife and his daughter. They didn't even know nothing about these things. The man has to end up shooting both of these creatures and killing them. And the rest of the family comes in and drags their bodies off. So, you know, it, the thing that gets me is, look, I've had daughter, I've got daughters. I had one daughter that was dating a boy and he was coming over and, and watching her in the window at night and all this stuff. And I'm a dad. Look, you mess with my kid. It can, it can get very violent and very vulgar and disgusting very shortly thereafter. That's my girl. You don't mess with my kid. And in no uncertain terms, I told him if I saw him again, he would never be seen again. And I may, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's a threat of a father. You don't mess with my kids. And he, shortly there after that, he ended up going to jail because he was overlooking in some woman's window one night and she saw him and called the cops on him and they took him to jail. So, you know, it just progressed for him. He didn't care. And it's the same way with a Bigfoot. They start looking at your wife and they start looking at your daughters like they're sexual items that they can have at any time. I'm sorry. No. Uh, I married that lady. You're not going to touch her and you're definitely not going to touch one of my daughters. Uh, it, it, it's you have when it comes to the house pounding it's because you've done something to make them mad and they found a way around it to get to your house to wake you up at two or three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. you know my grandmother always told me when i was a young man nothing ever good happens after midnight yeah and yeah we always said that in law enforcement mm -hmm. didn't we Val? Yeah. oh yeah and, and grandma was right these creatures somehow know that you're asleep. They see all the lights go off. You know, they don't hear any noise from the house. And it's usually 11, 12 o'clock when you're in bed, you're sound asleep. And all of a sudden you get woke up at one, two, three o'clock in the morning by them pounding on the side of the house. It's because they're showing their disdain for whatever you did to make them to where they couldn't come and watch your daughter or your wife get undressed. I'm sorry, but at that point, you're going to have to get very forceful. You're not going to walk outside with the, the Louisville slugger and take one of these things on. Mm -hmm. It's not a human being.
they'll take that Louisville slugger and slow it, shove it from one ear to the other. I mean, they're vicious fighters. They do, whenever they fight each other, there's no holds barred. And that's the way they fight. It's like getting in a street fight and bringing everything that you can stuff in your pockets to help you win, except for a gun. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is a vicious thing to have to deal with. They can get very mean and very aggressive. When they get to that point, you've got one or two choices. You either fight to win or you leave and let somebody else deal with the problem and then it goes back to what I was telling you earlier. Mm -hmm. How much do you want to lose? You want to lose everything? Mm -hmm. There's a, uh, there's a there was a report out of Canada. I want to say, I want to say it was in Ontario. I can't be for sure. I don't, I see so many thousands of reports and stuff. But this one struck me um, very hard. And what it is, is a, uh, a rest stop, much like we see around the interstates around the country, mm -hmm. up there in Canada, probably not as busy because it's not as populated. Right. Nevertheless, um, as the report goes, um, a um, a truck driver um, pulls off the ramp to park to go use the bathroom and stuff, mm -hmm. but there's a car there's a car blocking the egress. He's blocking the, the egress um, to the uh, rest area with those lights on, the door open, and there's nobody in it. It's like somebody just walked away from their vehicle. Mm -hmm. So he goes around, parks his truck, parks his rig, goes in and uses the bathroom, comes back out. He notices a uh, young lady, single mom, with her child, small child, sitting on a picnic table. And he's still looking back at that car back there. And um, he mentions that to that lady. And she says, yeah, it was there when, when I pulled in. So he says, as, as he was talking to the young lady, their attention is drawn to across the freeway to a rising hill. There they see a Sasquatch carrying what they believe to be a man because they could see the shoes, the legs. He's making it up the uh, hill. That's his vehicle right there, left to block and impede the traffic and stuff. Um, when they seen that, they both felt it was time to leave and without saying anything more, they got in their vehicles and left. They didn't say a, yeah. another thing. They never said that they called the police or the authorities or anything. They didn't want to get involved. Just leave. That's typical of the reports that I see. And some people tell me, Val, you just, you just, uh, talk about the, the, the violent, the negative stuff. No, I'm I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what people aren't telling you. I'm showing you what, what uh, people aren't telling mm -hmm. you. I'm not a parrot sitting up here reciting a, a narrative to make you feel good, to make it nice and stuff. If you're going to, if you're going to be fair, I have to tell you that um, when I compare the good Samaritan reports with the aggressive reports, you know, that's, there's there's no there's no equality there. No, In other it's words, two to three to four to one. Oh, more than that. Oh, they are more than that. Uh, Twenty eight reports to uh, I don't know three thousand, four thousand yeah. reports. There's no there's no uh, there's no measuring that. But that's the reason why it's done like that. So, um, I, you know, people have to be aware. They have to be aware of these things. And, and and I like to say, if if I'm driving down a road 
and and I see a road sign that tells me that there's uh, you know roads blocked. Uh, there's a there's a, a sinkhole up ahead. That doesn't tell me. That doesn't make me want to drive around that sign and 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 go see for myself. Drive into the hole and drive in. I want people to let me know. I want to be informed, uh, and I'll make my own decision. Do I right. go around the sign or do I find some place else to drive? You know, and that's the way to me. That's the way a lot of big footery is. People can either choose to know and be aware or disregard it, dismiss it at their own peril. Well, you're hundred percent right. I mean, that's just, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Every time, you know, if you, if, if people go and look, I, I don't care. You can go, don't subscribe. I don't care. You don't have to subscribe to my channel. It's not a requirement. Go and look at the videos and the accounts of the ones that I've done. Mm-hmm. I've got over 200 videos. And out of that 200 videos, I've maybe got four or five, maybe six, maybe 10 reports of Bigfoot where they're helpful or where they're nice. Mm -hmm. And the rest of them are all these animals or these creatures or people. Call them what you will. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. the, the people that call them uh, another another people in this world they've never ever had to deal with one of these creatures that has tried to grab a little seven or eight year old little blonde headed girl mm. I had a, a Bigfoot tried to grab this little the boy wasn't three foot tall he was in his backyard in a sandbox that his daddy built for him put everything the man worked his tail off to provide for his son a place to play in his backyard he loved to play in the sand and the dirt he had little Tonka trucks, little Tonka this, little Tonka that, excavators, everything. His daddy paid for every bit of that, and he worked his tail off to pay for it. This family had a different skin color. You can see me. I'm, I'm just some dumb old white redneck from West Virginia. That's what the, most people call me. I don't care. You can label me whatever way you want. I don't care. But this kid, see the look on this kid's face when his parents called me and I show up and I have to go to this house in a completely different state, southern, southwestern, North Carolina. To see that look on that boy's face, that boy was terrified. And that was 10 days after it happened. Two male Bigfoot come in the yard and tried to grab this kid. His daddy was sitting there at the kitchen table with sliding glass doors. And beside those sliding gas doors was a 12 gauge loaded with double op buckshot. That man went outside and fired five times at them creatures. They finally turned and ran. And that boy's face was still the same as when his daddy picked him up and carried him in the house. That boy was terrified. He wouldn't talk. Mom and dad would have to pick this boy up, carry him to the bathroom so he'd go to the bathroom, and then clean him up constantly because he was that scared. He was afraid to move. Mm -hmm. I had to go deal with those creatures because, and I'll call them a creature because, hey, to me, they're not human beings. Mm -hmm. You can call them a people, but they're, they're not human. 
-hmm. You know, they have animal tendencies. Mm -hmm. I had to deal with those creatures chasing them off by I think I ended up setting 24 different traps for them to walk through to get to the backyard. Even after he shot at them with double up buckshot, they still came back. He didn't hurt them. That hair is so thick, it doesn't make any difference. It takes a very high-powered rifle to, hit, to, to hurt them, hurt one. This man and this and and, and that that boy's dad and his mother. It's they were at a complete loss to what they could do to solve the issue. They didn't have a clue. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know these creatures were around. They just came in the backyard in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. Not at first thing in the morning. Not late in the afternoon where everybody says. Well, they're more active, you know, they, yeah, they are more active. These creatures took it upon themselves in the middle of the day mm -hmm. to walk in the man's backyard and try to grab his son. Mm -hmm. If he wouldn't have been sitting there, that boy would have been a missing person. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad would have never known. So, yeah, I, I've, I've seen, I've had an interactions. When I go, when I, when I went investigating, I went and found ones that were nice. And by nice, I, I don't mean they didn't charge me. They didn't try to make me into dinner. They didn't try to make me into breakfast or lunch. They would let me get within a certain distance to look at them. But if I got too close, hey, they either moved or the big male let me know I was too close. And then it's those are the ones you go investigate. You don't go and investigate the ones that are out here terrorizing people, killing their family pets, killing the livestock, killing all your chickens, your geese, your whatever, just to be killing. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones you leave alone and let, let the government send kill teams and deal with them. If you got to become the kill team, you better be downright ruthless mm -hmm. because they're going to be. Mm -hmm. They don't have firearms, but they got all that strength and that that working brain. Mm -hmm. They can get you and put you in a box, what we would call a kill box, and you guys both know what a kill box is. Oh, yeah. They can put you in a kill box and rip you apart. You're done. So if you see one of these creatures in your backyard, by all means, run outside, shoot a gun in the air, take your 12 gauge out there and shoot it in there, run it off. Let them know you have a firearm. They don't know what type it is. All they know is it goes boom. Get them out of there. Don't let them come around your home. Install lights. Install camera systems. Whatever you got to do that will show that you know that they're around and that they are not wanted. Mm -hmm. If it progresses to the smacking on the house, you better get help. You mm -hmm. better call someone like me. Mm -hmm. It don't have to be me. It can be anyone else out there that is doing this. Most of your investigators will come there and make a nuisance of themselves and they'll solve a lot of problems. But if it's to the point of them smacking the house, throwing limbs on top of your house, throwing rocks on top, and I'm not talking about the little number 57 limestone mm -hmm. they're throwing at the top of your house. I'm talking about rocks that are as big as my head. Mm -hmm. And throwing them on top of your house, trying to make it go through your roof. Mm -hmm. Because it does progress to that. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. And and that account of 
those Bigfoot going after those miners, mm. all them years ago, in the, what was it, 1885? When they done that, is because those miners were trying to protect what they had and what they were doing, and these creatures didn't want them there. Mm -hmm. That night long fight is what Bigfoot will do. They don't know when to stop. Mm -hmm. If you don't show them dominance real quick, it's going to progress to that. And when it comes to that almighty fight, <laughs> you've lost. Because you don't have a cabin that's made out of 14 or 16 or 24 inch thick logs to protect mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You've got a stick big old house. Mm -hmm. Or a house made out of blocks. Something they can bust through in no time. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let it get that far. It gets that far, you better laugh and let the government take care of the issue. Because mm -hmm. I'm not coming. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see my grandchildren reach at least 25 before I go from this earth. Mm -hmm. But I'm not stupid. I know when to say, hey, I can't handle this. Mm -hmm. It's time to pick up the phone and call somebody. Have, Make a call to your sheriff. Have you ever ran into situations like that? Yeah. I was asked by a state trooper uh, to come and help him on his farm, his family's farm and uncle's. Mm -hmm. And we dealt with five of the most vicious Bigfoot I have ever dealt with in my life. Without doubt. And everything, huh? Without doubt. Without doubt, most yeah. vicious. And I set up flashbangs that would blow the cans apart. They walked right through them. Mm -hmm. so if, if people think that these things are all cute and cuddly like your little like the little cat that's laying right here on my wife's lap mm -hmm. I got news for you come to West Virginia come to Pennsylvania Ohio, Kentucky North Carolina mm -hmm. South Carolina for years these creatures have been terrorizing people the rogue ones are the nice ones. Most of these creatures, 80, 90% of them, they don't want nothing to do with you. They want you to leave them alone. Best thing to do, leave them alone. So why doesn't that apply to them as well with people? You know, people just want to be left alone, don't they? Most well, yeah, sure, Val. But the problem is um, when you get outside the... the they see the cities as where we're supposed to live mm -hmm. and they get everything else. Mm -hmm. That is how they have shown to think over 30 some years. I have figured that much out on them. Mm -hmm. Henry moon, mm -hmm. Henry moon, a native American speaker used to be quite popular mm -hmm. in a national, in the national uh, speaking um, circuit. He once said that Sasquatches cannot be trusted. Nope. Cannot be trusted. Nope. They're, they're opportunist. They yep. have no shame. They have uh, they have this idea that whatever you have, they're entitled to, mm -hmm. to that as well. And they'll take it. Yep. They're opportunist. That's Henry Moon. Um. Can y'all give me one minute? I got to yeah. deal with a little yeah. situation. Sure. I'll be right back. I sure. promise. Absolutely. Sure. Well, Val, uh, very interesting. Very interesting, Grizz. It's not coming from me for a change. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I try to tell people, but oh, no, Bigfoot. I love Bigfoot. I want some Bigfoot. Give me, give me some Bigfoot. I'm going to go feed him some apples. Yeah, I wish I could see one. I, I wish I could be gifted with, with seeing one. Well, you yes, know. Leonda, stay tuned. There we go, Val. We'll give you a break, too. We'll go to a commercial break. Good thinking. Stay Very in good. Stay. There we go.
All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We had a little short commercial break. All right. Everybody's back. Thanks for everybody's patience there. Welcome back, everybody. I'm, so, yes, I'm glad, welcome I'm back, glad we went Val to the and break. Yeah. I'm glad we went to the I break. Mean, I had quick break. We'll, grab we'll, we'll wrap it up here in a minute. But, uh, but no, but uh, see, now this is coming from somebody besides Grizzly. Because mm-hmm. I try to tell people this, but everybody's like, it's just Grizzly saying this. But I try to explain this to people. Because everybody we always involve or talk to, it's like they're but they're friendly old bear, you know. They just yeah. want eggs, you know. We where we we give them we you know we give them beads and trinkets and uh, whatever. So strawberry bubble baths and grapes and stuff like that. Back rubs. Uh, I don't know. I just I just don't trust them. I'm sorry. I just that's just my opinion. I just do well, not trust let me let me give you guys a for instance that uh, this older lady, her husband passed. She has her own place. She lives out in the middle of nowhere. She started feeding these creatures. She even went as far as getting one of them old iron tubs. Filling it with water once a week on Saturday. Putting rose petals and milk in this tub of hot water. And according to her, from a hospital bed, this creature would come out, dip itself into that tub, and done that for six months. One day she went out and she has no clue what she did. She either didn't have the water water temperature right to make it happy. Or she didn't put enough milk in it. Or she didn't put enough rose petals in there to make it happy. This female Sasquatch smacked this woman (laughs) 10 foot through the air, knocking her 10 feet from where she was standing, watching this creature, came up, got out of that, stepped into the tub, didn't like it, ran over, charged her, knocked her 10 feet through the air. 74-year-old woman put her in the hospital. The only reason that Bigfoot didn't kill her is because her son pulled in the driveway. Hmm. So the next person that comes to me and says, oh, they're all cuddly. I'm going to take him right out in the middle of the woods in the dark. I'm going to do a Bigfoot howl that's aggressive. Let them deal with the consequences. I'm tired of all these people that want to think that Bigfoot is your buddy. He's not. Nor is the female. They have one thing in life. Two things. Protect their young and eat. And if you interfere with those two things, you just signed your death warrant. That's your problem. You deal with it. Pick the phone up and call me, and I'm going to ask you what you did. And if you created the problem, I'm going to tell you sorry, but I'm not dealing with it. I've done it before, and all it does is they they, they quit for six months or a year, then they start over again. It doesn't, it, it's, it's a never ending cycle. Mm-hmm. People that think these vicious animals are cute and cuddly don't learn from their mistakes. They keep doing it. Mm-hmm. So there was a question in the comments a minute ago 
Yeah. And uh, what caliber do you recommend? You can place shots in the head or the throat of a Bigfoot with a high power caliber of 30 out 6, 270, 308, 3030, 300, Win Mag 338, Lapua, um, uh, 338 ROM, any caliber. If you can place the shot effectively in the head and right underneath the chin or in the back of the head or the back of the, the neck, effectively with that gun, being scared half to death, then it's the right caliber. If you shoot him anywhere else, shoot yourself the second bullet. Oh, wow. Because at that time, they're going to be on you. You take a knee out, they still got one good leg and two good arms. Mm -hmm. They can still scramble on three legs just like a dog can on three legs. They are fast. Faster than you working the bolt on a rifle or working the lever action or a sem well, semi-auto, you got a little bit of a chance to get a second shot, but by that time they're moving so fast, it's hard to get on. If so they're, they're coming after you, anything you can use to place that shot effectively in this area, the top of their head, you're good. So there was a, a question earlier. Uh, some people wanted to know if you would dif differentiate the difference between gifting and baiting. Okay. In your, in your opinion, Obear. My opinion, gifting is when you knowingly go out, take any kind of a fruit, any kind of vegetable, any kind of meat, any kind of source of protein or calories or whatever. I don't care. Whatever you give to them. Mm -hmm. And you put it in a certain spot and it disappears every time and you see 18-inch prints, 20-inch prints, 22-inch prints, even down to the 12-inch prints where the little ones are coming into it. Or you're taking little trinkets out there, you're taking beads, you're taking uh, little cars and stuff like that out there, and you're giving it to them freely. That's gifting. If you're going out and you're putting peanut butter and you're taking a, a long screw and you're screwing that peanut butter cap into a tree and you twist it on the tree and you cut the end off to bait deer, you're baiting a Sasquatch too. They love the taste of peanut butter. So do deer. Mm -hmm. Now you've got two viable food sources for that Bigfoot. Or if you're putting corn out for deer, it's a viable food source for Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. You're putting horse and mule feed out, another viable source of food for Bigfoot. Anytime you do anything like that, that's baiting animals. Mm -hmm. You might mean to go out there and feed the turkey and the deer and the bear and the squirrels and all this, but you're also drawing in those Bigfoot that come in and hunt those creatures and they'll eat that stuff too. Mm -hmm. That's baiting. That's very good. Yeah, it is. What do you think about people carrying these pistol car or calibers around thinking they're safe? Well, gentlemen, both of you know what a forty caliber will do to a human being. Yes, I do. I don't know if you do or not, though. I don't know if you ever had to use your service weapon or whatever when you was when you're in the uh, police. I know very well what a forty caliber will do to a person. 40 caliber won't touch a Bigfoot. Won't harm it. Not enough to stop it dead. Only way is in the head or right under that chin into that throat area 
and destroying the cerebral cortex on the backside. Only way to stop them effectively. If they can't move their arms and legs, they can't kill you. They might sound like they're going to, but they're not able to do it because they can't move these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And rip you, grab you by your arm, your left arm and right arm and go, pop. Pistol calibers less than 500 Smith, uh, 500 Smith, the 460, anything less than that, you're the only time you're going to get use a pistol of a smaller caliber at that distance to actually kill a Bigfoot is when he's done grabbed you and you pull the gun and you start emptying the gun into his head. I can kill a deer with a 40 caliber. I can kill a deer with a 9 millimeter. I can kill a bear, walk up to a bear and finish a bear off. I bear hunt. They're dangerous. Those calibers are fine for thin skinned game. Thick muscled game. They're well, not game. They're they're you're not supposed a lot of states have these things where you're not supposed to kill. But something that is that thick muscle and that thick of bone, you are going to make them matter. The matter they get, the worse they are. If anybody out there that has been in the military and you've had to be in hand-to-hand -hand combat with someone on the battlefield, you'll understand what I'm talking about. If you can't do the job with what you got, don't try the job. You have to be ruthless. You have to be down and dirty in the mud, in the trenches, willing to fight for your life and someone else's life. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to give your life to save someone else. Mm -hmm. And in hand-to-hand -hand combat, it's not the same as two humans. You got to remember, they, they can outreach you and even when their arms are stretched all the way out, they can still rip you apart. Mm -hmm. Messing with one of these creatures, dealing with one that is mad, is the last thing the typical American citizen will want to do. It's not like living on the streets of Detroit or Chicago, where everybody's got a gun and, and and you don't know who the criminals are and you don't know who the you don't know if the person you walked past a minute ago was a criminal or a good person. These creatures you will know one thing for truth. They can kill you at the drop of a hat. It may piss them off or you may burp and make them mad, or you may be out in the woods and be there with two buddies standing there talking in the woods because you was out hiking that day, and one of you expel gas in some way, shape, or form and make them mad. Because more than likely, when you're in the woods, they know where you are, they know what you are doing, and they know if you got a gun. Because nine times out of ten, they're going to smell the oil that you put on the gun or on the leather that it's in or the holster, or they're going to smell the gunpowder you fired in that gun mm -hmm. last weekend because you didn't clean it. Mm -hmm. They know when there's a firearm. They don't like to deal with them, but if they think they can get something over you, 
and you not be able to pull that gun and you make them mad, they're going to do it. Grizz, what kind of weapon did you guys carry on the job? Uh, we carried 40s, and at the end, we went back to 9s because the state went to the 9 mils. Yeah. Old Bear, we carried 40. When I retire, as in police culture, they hand the weapon back to you. You retire in good standing. A handshake. This is your, this is your, uh, this is your job well done. And to this day, I've got two of them. And that's what I was carrying during my sighting. And there's no doubt in my mind that it's seen, it's seen that weapon on my, on my side. Oh yeah. But I was very, very grateful that I got the good stare down and and I was able to leave without without being molested, let us say. But um, speaking about sniffing and smelling, <clears throat> according, according to my data, from what I see, there mm -hmm. are a lot of reports of, besides the window peeping, there is a obvious uh, fatuation with people going bathroom or people having sex, the mm -hmm. voyeur, going back to the voyeurism aspect of Bigfoot Sasquatches. Lost a video, Val. Okay, let's see if we can. There we go. There you yeah. go. So, so there's a fatuation with, with people going bathroom. People stop parking their vehicles, stepping out, going to the bathroom. That's when a lot of these encounters happen in parked vehicles, uh, people at campgrounds, uh, going to the Porter Johns. That's when a lot of encounters happen, happen during, uh, uh, camping activities and stuff. Why do you think that is? It's because human beings are in their backyard. Mm -hmm. Bigfoot. No, when people are around. We just got home earlier today from me and my wife going camping. Now, I used to be in the mindset, I'm good in a nylon tent. Uh-uh. Not anymore. If it was up to me and my wife would let me, our camper would weigh about 20,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. Because I would add so much steel to that thing. All four walls, the roof, the flooring, everything. I'd have to go out and buy a one-ton diesel just to pull it. And it's only a 22-foot-long camper. Mm -hmm. Or 26, including the tongue and the bumper on the back. Mm -hmm. It's a nice camper. I love going camping with my wife. Mm -hmm. I love to take and go camping and, and go with my, fam my little brother. He goes camping, and, and we have a ball. Every time we go, but every time we go, I carry my 40. My brother carries a firearm when he goes. My wife carries her personal firearm, which is the 357 Magnum. Now, when you see a five foot tall woman pull up a 357, you better be scared <clears throat> because that woman's a deadly shot. She don't miss. She hits where she wants to hit. And I carry an AR. And sometimes I'll take my 300 Magnum with me. Depending on the area that I'm going to. Most of the time it's just my 40 and her 357. And then like this past weekend, I carried my 40 and an AR. Because of the area we were in. Mm -hmm. We were tucked in a little hollow at the end of that little section of campground. And the whole time we were there, everybody was down near the bathhouse. Mm -hmm. Now, we heard footfalls Friday night. We also heard um, whoops from way back up in the hall. Mm -hmm. And that was long before the footfalls come down and we're overlooking 
a family, three kids, mom and dad, in a eight or ten man tent, and then a tent in the back of a pickup. And from what I could tell, none of them had firearms. Mom and dad didn't have firearms. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly legal where we were at to have them. State of West Virginia is open carry or closed carry. You don't have that permit. Mm -hmm. It's constitutional carry. Mm -hmm. I might go to a national forest and... Hey, the National Forest around here, if you go into a National Forest here and go camping, which a lot of places are here, you're asking for trouble if you don't carry a firearm. Not from people, from the big hairy things walking around the woods. They like to come and see what you're doing, and if you are dumb enough to leave food out, it's not the bears that are coming down and raiding your cooler at night mm -hmm. it's Bigfoot coming helping himself to free food unless you see claw marks don't think it's a bear mm -hmm. Bigfoot are smart enough to know and they have seen bears go in and break the wind in a pickup and tear the whole front of the pickup up just eat a guy's lunch at a coal mine they've seen all that stuff they've seen all the ruckus it causes mm -hmm. they go to these campgrounds and you take off and take the kids to the to the pool that's up there to where the pool area is and where everybody else in the campgrounds at and while you're gone you come back and you're like man somebody robbed us no it wasn't somebody it was something and there's no claw marks. It's not a bear. That's not a coon. There's not teeth marks in it. That's a Bigfoot that said, huh, nobody's around. Free food, hot dogs, hamburger. Mm -hmm. They get out and get your food. Mm -hmm. They're not stupid. They, know, they understand when people go camping, they have food. There's a pretty good report out of California where some loggers were logging and um, they got into a, uh, a brawl with, with the workers because the workers were very upset when they went to eat. Their burritos were gone. Mm -hmm. And um, when they when they encountered the uh, Sasquatches, the Sasquatches apparently, according to the reports, threw the burritos and, and struck several of the, the men. Apparently they didn't like burritos. Spices. Spices, probably. Well, you... go ahead, Brown. I'm sorry. That's all right. So so the, the, the loggers pleaded with uh, helicopters pilots to, to take them out of that area and stuff. They were in a panic. Mm -hmm. But but again, stealing lunches. Um, uh, what was your what was your thought? Over well, when it comes to the burritos, the spices, you know, you, you got to think of a, a, a Bigfoot's diet. There's not a lot of spices in their food. Mm -hmm. um, they Big, Bigfoot will eat, kill a deer and eat it like it is. They'll just rip the hide off from it and, and start munching. There's not mm -hmm. spices there. Mm -hmm. The spices probably affected their stomachs and made them mad. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can give you a for instance of when spices actually work to deter Bigfoot. Um, a little over a year ago, a the state trooper that I helped on his uncle's property had a problem with a Bigfoot uh, at his home. I told him how to make five-arm chili. Bigfoot ate about, well, uh, I think it was like a five-gallon container of 
five alarm chili. Now this chili has cayenne pepper in it, mm -hmm. ghost peppers, mm -hmm. jalapeno peppers. No, sir. And everything else. And it's all disguised with sweet um, spaghetti sauce mm. to kill that smell because they can smell those spices. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you put enough spaghetti, sweet spaghetti sauce in there, they don't notice it until they eat it. Mm -hmm. Well, this Bigfoot left a trail of about a half a mile of... Let's not sugarcoat this. Diarrhea after he ate that chili. He never came back. He figured out that he wasn't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that, hey, gift him the chili. Let him have all of it he'll eat. Let him deal with the consequences as he runs off because his stomach is all messed up. Mm-hmm. They get the hint. You're not wanted here. Leave. Don't play with one of these creatures. Mm -hmm. If you're gifting, you're asking for trouble. If you're trying to bait them in, you're asking for trouble. Miss a feeding. You'll see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Well, old bear, I really appreciate your time and and thanks for coming on the show tonight. I really do. Very good, old bear. Yeah, greatly I'm glad, appreciate. I'm glad it. to get this opportunity to speak with you and stuff. It was very nice. Hopefully, you come back again. Yeah, uh, anytime, sir. Really, uh, I'd I'd like to chat with you again. Let me let me uh, say one thing before we take off. Absolutely. A few weeks ago, you had someone on that I that that I know. I met that person three years ago in Tennessee, and the thing she was that it was a female. The things she was saying on your show mm -hmm. were things I told her three years ago. Mm -hmm. Please be careful. When you sit down and listen to, to these other people out here that are talking about Bigfoot, and when they say something and you think you've heard it before, mm -hmm. it's because they're just rehashing the same thing that someone else has told them that that person thought that they could trust them with. The things I told that person, and I'm not going to name names, uh, I'm not like that, I'm not going to. I'm not going to sit here and, and downgrade the person. But the things I told that person were in confidence because it was a test for that person. Mm -hmm. They failed it. And this person knows who I'm talking about if they're watching the show, and I hope they see this. If you spread disinformation, I will call you out on it. And if you're putting people's lives in jeopardy, I will definitely call you out on it. So be mindful of what you tell people about these creatures. Be honest about it. If you know anything about Bigfoot, be honest. Don't lie to people. Don't tell them they're cute and cuddly because it's only a very small percentage of Bigfoot that are in this world that are cute and cuddly or want to be cute and cuddly. It's not Harry and the Hendersons anymore. It hasn't been for hundreds and thousands of years. They've never been that way. So just be mindful of what you take from other people. If you want the truth about them, Go and ask someone that's had to deal with them. And they'll tell you the truth about it. Because they don't, they, it don't take very many instances that I've had to deal with these creatures and deal with them harshly to save someone's life because they made a simple mistake to make you very pessimistic of your fellow humans when it comes to these creatures. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. And I'm getting to the age now, guys. I'm getting slow. Um, I'm getting old. I can't go as hard as I used to. And it's, it's, it's to the point now where it's better for me to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to save someone's life so they will understand that when you're out there, when you're out in the woods or you're out in your back 40 or you're out deer hunting with your buddies, you see one of these creatures, walk away. Don't run. When you run, you become prey. They will chase you down. They can chase you down. And they will harm you or kill you. It's happened for centuries that way. So that's that's all I wanted to say, guys. I appreciate your yeah, coming. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank you. much, Joe Barry. You have a good evening, sir. Take well care. Spoken. Thank you Thank again. You. Good night, guys. We'll good see. night. Val, what do you think there, sir? Uh, you know, that's got to be one of the best shows we've had, really. And I yeah. feel and I feel crappy. I still feel crappy, but I feel a lot better than I did the day before. But it was a good show. I like it, that. It was an absolutely good show. I hope you get mm -hmm. feeling better. I, I will. I will. All right. Well, you have a good evening. Godspeed, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, hopefully everybody has a good rest of the week. And uh, we'll see you on the flip side, ladies and gentlemen. Take care. And Val, you get feeling better, brother. All right, my friend. Later. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Take care. Godspeed. We'll see you. And thanks again, O'Bear. Take care.